Poems Every Child Should Know, edited by Mary E. Burt. Section 32, read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg. This section contains two poems, Fidelity and The Chambered Nautilus. Part 3, continued. Fidelity. Fidelity, by William Wordsworth, 1770 to 1850, is placed here out of respect to a boy of eleven years, who liked the poem well enough to recite it frequently. The scene is laid on Havellen, to me the most impressive mountain of the Lake District of England. Wordsworth is a part of this country. I once heard John Burroughs say, I went to the Lake District to see what kind of a country it could be that would produce a Wordsworth. A barking sound the shepherd hears, a cry as of a dog or fox. He halts and searches with his eyes among the scattered rocks, and now at distance can discern a stirring in a brake of fern, and instantly a dog is seen, glancing through that covert green. The dog is not of mountain breed, its motions too are wild and shy, with something, as the shepherd thinks, unusual in its cry. Nor is there any one in sight, all round, in hollow, or on height, nor shout, nor whistle strikes his ear. What is the creature doing here? It was a cove, a huge recess that keeps till June December's snow, a lofty precipice in front, a silent tarn below. Far in the bosom of Havellen, remote from public road or dwelling, pathway or cultivated land, from trace of human foot or hand. There sometimes doth a leaping fish send through the tarn a lonely cheer. The crags repeat the raven's croak in symphony austere. Thither the rainbow comes, the cloud and mists that spread the flying shroud, and sunbeams, and the sounding blast that if it could would hurry past, but that enormous barrier binds it fast. Not free from boding thoughts a while the shepherd stood, then makes his way toward the dog, o'er rocks and stones, as quickly as he may. Nor far had gone before he found a human skeleton on the ground. The appalled discoverer with a sigh looks round to learn the history. From those abrupt and perilous rocks the man had fallen, that place of fear. At length upon the shepherd's mind it breaks, and all is clear. He instantly recalled the name, and who he was, and whence he came. Remembered, too, the very day on which the traveller passed this way. But here a wonder, for whose sake this lamentable tale I tell. A lasting monument of words, this wonder merits well. The dog, which still was hovering nigh, repeating the same timid cry, the dog had been through three months' space a dweller in that savage place. Yes, proof was plain that since the day when this ill-fated traveller died, the dog had watched about the spot, or by his master's side. How nourished here through such long time he knows who gave that love sublime, and gave that strength of feeling great above all human estimate. William Wordsworth The Chambered Nautilus People are more and more coming to recognize the fact that each individual soul has a right to its own stages of development. The chambered Nautilus is for that reason beloved of the masses. It is one of the grandest poems ever written. Build thee more stately mansions, O my soul. This line alone would make the poem immortal. This is the ship of pearl, which, poets feign, sailed the unshadowed main, the venturous bark that flings on the sweet summer wind its purpled wings, in gulfs enchanted where the siren sings, and coral reefs lie bare, where the cold sea-maids rise to sun their streaming hair. Its webs of living gauze no more unfurl, wrecked is the ship of pearl, and every chambered cell where its dim dreaming life was wont to dwell, as the frail tenant shaped his growing shell, before thee lies revealed, its irised ceiling rent, its sunless crypt unsealed. Year after year beheld the silent toil that spread his lustrous coil. Still as the spiral grew, 
He left the past year's dwelling for the new. Stole with soft step its shining archway through, Built up its idle door. Stretched in his last found home, And knew the old no more. Thanks for the heavenly message brought by thee, Child of the wandering sea, Cast from her lap forlorn. From thy dead lips a clearer note is born Than ever Triton blew from wreathed horn. While on my ear it rings, Through the deep caves of thought I hear a voice that sings. Build thee more stately mansions, O my soul, As the swift seasons roll. Leave thy low vaulted past. Let each new temple, nobler than the last, Shut thee from heaven with a dome more vast, Till thou at length art free, Leaving thine outgrown shell By life's unresting sea. Oliver Wendell Holmes End of section 32 Read by Kara Schallenberg on October 25th, 2006 in Oceanside, California.